Hello friends and welcome back to my channel, Blue Nose Trading. My name is Tori Silvis and today I'm going to be making tumblers with Laguna B3 Black Clay. Laguna actually calls this clay B3 Brown, but as a matter of personal opinion, it's black. Anyways, I worked with B3 a while back in a different video, but I'll give a quick summary here. This clay is messy. It will leave iron stains on everything in your studio, including you. This is a cone 5 clay body that some people seem to have issues with bloating. I've not ever personally had issues with bloating with this clay. I fired a cone 5 at medium speed with a 5 minute hold. Wharton cone tests have shown that I'm reaching a neat cone 6 with this schedule. The shrinkage is listed at 10%, but I'm going to be honest, it always feels higher to me. I should test the shrinkage, but I haven't, so file that information away as you will. As far as throwing, this clay is slightly groggy and can be a bit dense. I've also never personally gotten a box of this clay that wasn't on the firm side, which might just be a locally me problem, but the firmness of the clay will change the throwing experience. For me, I've always had very firm, bordering on uncomfortably firm, B3 straight out of the bag for throwing. When trimming, the grog will catch on the trim tool. I like to use a soft rubber rib to smooth out the trim marks. The surface of this clay is what I would describe as sensitive. It picks up and holds a lot of textures, so take extra care to keep the finish as you'd like it. I suppose if you're just going to throw glaze over it, it isn't as much of a problem, but if you want to have unglazed parts to the work, you will need to take extra care not to ding up the surface of the unglazed areas before the piece is dried and fired. When attaching the tops to my tumblers or handles to mugs, I score the points of attachment and use a layer of clay slip to glue the parts together. I really like to use a combination of my fingers, paint brushes, and a rubber rib to finish out the top of the tumbler. I take time to give attention and care to every single one, although this video is sped up quite a bit for your sake. You might also notice that I'm putting the tops onto different shape than I've been working with so far. Surprise! There are going to be two forms of the black tumblers at the end of this video. But for real though, I put all the tops on the bellied tumblers that we've been working with before I remembered that I was supposed to be recording it. Oops, well, it be like that sometimes. Anyway, I made a good deal of these for the experimental set, both straight walled and bellied tumblers. After a bisque fire, these are ready for some glaze. To glaze the insides of these, I'm currently using an oiled syringe to measure out about 20 milliliters of my liner glaze. I usually put a little bit of olive oil on the rubber plunger part of the syringe so it slides easier and doesn't hurt my hands after repeated use. This is like a low-key pro tip if you didn't know because they can get really stiff and then your hands get really stiff too. I'm open to a better way of doing this to be honest, but I don't know what any better way is so this is what I've got right now. B3 and pretty much all dark brown clay bodies are known for being difficult to glaze. Thankfully, B3 is a clay body that I regularly use for glaze test tiles. So if you want to see how B3 looks across a lot of different commercial glazes, check out my glaze test playlist. I test different commercial glazes across seven or more different clay bodies. Speaking of glazes, since we're here, glazing, I've been thinking about the boundaries between sharing recipes and all that jazz, and what I think feels right for me where I'm at right now is that I'm not going to be handing out the glaze recipes that I've worked to fine tune and develop to specifically fit my clay bodies. I will, however, always share any commercial glazes when I use them, and I'll happily even send you a link to a commercial glaze. For B3 specifically, Enchantment by Penguin Pottery is a stunning glaze. Glazing these is a meticulous process for me. The application of your glaze has a big impact on the end results. Thickness, evenness, and texture of application are all important, especially when you're brushing on breaking or running glazes. Glaze application is a finesse and a relationship with each of your individual glaze and firing schedules that I think we can only learn with experience over time. If you know, you know, and if you don't know, you will soon. After the glaze fire, I like to wet sand all the unglazed parts of the pot. 
I think with this clay body, the sanding really helps to smooth out and improve the experience of the texture of the unglazed clay in your hands. Sanding will also sometimes leave tiny white flecks on the surface of this clay, which I speculate is the grog bits in the body. It isn't really a big deal, but it is something to be aware of depending on what aesthetic you're going for. These sip top tumblers will be available on my website, bluenosetrading.com. I think they're going to be listed as pre-order, which is code for made to order for now. I would expect a one to three week turnaround time depending on where I am in my making cycle. I plan to have a stack of bisques for glaze to order, but I will have to have a full kiln before I can fire them. I also don't know how long these will be available. I might get tired of staining my hands in my studio orange and take a break from B3 in the future. Depending on when you're watching this video on YouTube, they may already be a thing of the past. But you can always check out what's available right now at bluenosetrading.com. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit of what goes into making some of these tumblers. If you'd like to get early access to all of my videos and podcast episodes, you can become a channel member here on YouTube or support at patreon.com slash bluenosetrading. Remember that you have great ideas that are worth exploring, drink lots of water, and I will see y'all next week.